Since 1440, Eton has nurtured its fair share of poets and composers. Perhaps its most public contribution has been to our British national anthems. Thomas Arne was here, who composed God Save Our Queen and Rule Britannia. A.C. Benson was here, who wrote the words to Elgar's Land of Hope and Glory. Parry was here, who wrote the music to Jerusalem. And Cecil Spring Rice was here, who wrote the words to hosts, I vow to thee my country. To help this cause, in 1911, the young impressionable 16-year-old Philip Heseltine was an Etonian here. And he had attended an event that was perhaps to have more profound effect on him and to germinate his devotion to music that was to lead him to become the composer Peter Warlock. This is the entrance to War House, where the impressionable Philip Heseltine was living when he was at Eton. At that time, his housemaster was H.B. Hubert Brinton, a classics master. And on the 16th of June, 1911, Mr. Brinton gave Philip permission to go to Slough Station and take the train to Paddington. At Paddington, he was met by his Etonian piano teacher, Colin Taylor, who had been teaching in Oxford that day. Together, they went to the Queen's Hall, where Thomas Beecham was conducting an all Delius programme with the composer present. There was Paris, Appalachia, the Dance Rhapsody, and the first performance of Songs of Sunset with Edward Mason's choir. Now, Edward Mason taught cello at Eton and had shown Philip the score. He had also shown him the score of Sea Drift, upon which he wrote to his mother, Mr. Mason lent me a copy of Delius's Sea Drift, it is absolutely heavenly and, to my mind, as near perfection almost as any music I have ever seen. What it must be with the proper orchestral colour. Oh, that I could hear some Delius. That night, not only did his dream come true, but he met the composer in the interval. And the following day, from here, started a lifelong correspondence between Philip and Frederick Delius.
to sing the toasting chorus. The cricketers of Antolin arise like a chorus. goes on longer than that. Um, we are in a summer garden, and that was a bit in a summer garden. Um, excuse me about the microphone. Um, next month, <coughs> it'll be 75 years since a young man got on the train at the Garde de Lyon, the stopping train, and arrived at Boral Marlox Grey, walked over the fields, stopped outside the church, and asked one of the locals where the house of Delius was. And his name was Felix Abrahamian. And it was the 8th of August, 1933. Not the first, but I'm, as I say, one of many pilgrims, which includes us, who have come to this wonderful house and stood in this wonderful garden. I'd like to thank Jean-Mel de Vigny for allowing us and all those that have gone before us that have come here, and also to hope that in the future, Delians, Warlockians, and others will be welcome in this beautiful house and in this wonderful yeah. house. We would like to thank Eric and the boys for yesterday's wonderful concert, and uh, this is today's wonderful concert. 